Mount Washington, the highest peak in the northeastern United States. Known for its extreme weather, was once only available to climb for those who were in good physical shape. Even then, it was a tough climb. You see, Mount Washington is thought to have the worst weather in the entire world. This is due to the mountain being in the path of many storm tracks, leading to extreme weather for most of the year, including high winds up to 231 miles an hour. Sylvester Marsh, a man born in Campton, New Hampshire, had decided to come back home after spending years in Chicago making a name for himself. On a hike with a friend up the mountain, they battled through rough weather. They eventually reached the summit and took refuge inside the Tip Top House Hotel. When Marsh awoke the next morning to see the view from the peak, he was in absolute awe. He knew at that very moment everyone should be allowed to see this magnificent sight. He went to the New Hampshire State Legislature with a request for permission to build a railway to the summit of Mount Washington, a three-mile journey. He was laughed at and told it was impossible. He was told to build a railway to the moon. The New Hampshire State Legislature decided to give Mr. Marsh permission to build the railway in 1858, more as a joke than anything. However, he would have to wait until the end of the American Civil War before construction could start. Although Sylvester Marsh was laughed at, he had a design up his sleeve, a design that was so revolutionary that it would allow locomotives to do the impossible, climb a mountain. A rack and pinion system, as it was known, wasn't anything new. It had already been used previously in England. However, the way they were used previously was heavily different. The original purpose was simply to help locomotives gain more traction on flat surfaces. Instead of this, the cog railway would use this system to defy gravity itself. At the time, trains were only able to climb grades of 10%, meaning the train goes up 10 feet in height every 100 feet. The cog railway would have an average grade at a staggering 25%, more than double what a normal railway could do. This amazing feat was done by having a cog gear under the locomotive fit into a rack rail underneath the train, allowing the train to climb steep grades. And so, after demonstrating the technology to investors on a small test track, in the spring of 1866, the Mount Washington Railway Company was born. The line would follow a path that had been established by Ethan Allen Crawford. The Boston, Concord, and Montreal Railroad also decided to build a railway line from Fabian Station in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, all the way to the base station, now known as Marshfield. A combination of Marsh's name and Darby Fields, the first person to climb Mount Washington. While the line was being constructed, employees grew tired of having to wait for the steam train to bring them back down from the construction site, a trip that would take quite a while. So they created something known as the Devil Shingles. These were wooden slide boards that would ride on the center rack rail and would have some kind of device grip the rail for braking. Employees eventually started trying to see who could get down the fastest. One individual made the three mile trip down the mountain in just two minutes and 45 seconds, at an average speed of 62 miles an hour, a record that is still held to this day, and most likely won't ever be broken, as the devil's shingles were banned around the 1920s. The first train ride on the incomplete line took place on August 14, 1868, traveling to Jacob's Ladder, a trestle near the summit where the railway reaches its steepest grade at 37.4%. Not only is this still the world's steepest railroad trestle today, but it also gives the Cog Railway the title of the second steepest railway in the world. Finally, on July 3rd, 1869, the first train reached the summit of Mount Washington. Sylvester Marsh had achieved the impossible 
and will be etched into history as the man who built a railway to the moon. The railway employed two locomotives. Number one was a vertical boiler engine named Hero. However, this name didn't last long, as Ryder took one look at the engine and declared that it looked like a bottle of pepper sauce. Due to the New England accent at the time, it was pronounced as pepper sass, and the name stuck. Today, number one, now known as Old Pepper Sass, can be viewed on permanent display at base station. The reason why will be discussed later. Number two, known as Geo Stephenson, is a very similar design to Pepper Sass. This locomotive had been built by Walter Aiken as his own version of Pepper Sass. However, it unfortunately didn't work as well as number one and was soon rebuilt by Cog to be more reliable. Over the years, Cog acquired and lost many locomotives. These include, but are not limited to, number three, whose name is still unknown. Number four was known as Atlas. Number five was Cloud. Number six is the very first of many engines named Tip Top. And then eventually a new number three was built in 1874. This would be a revolutionary engine for the railway as it was the first to have a horizontal boiler rather than a vertical one. This engine would be named Hercules. The railway's other locomotives were number seven, named Falcon, and number eight, which was Pilgrim. Number seven would become the brand new number one after rolling down the mountain in a freak accident. This was caused when the locomotive was hit by a strong gale during the layover at the summit. It would be rebuilt as number one, Mount Washington. On the topic of rebuilds, number four, Cloud, will be rebuilt as Eagle. A new engine named Amanusik was also built in 1883. Then, in 1895, a fire broke out at the base maintenance shops, destroying much equipment. Unfortunately, this led to Eagle being scrapped. The rest of the roster was thankfully repaired. The next year in 1884 was a horrible year for the COG. Sylvester Marsh passed away, and the ownership of the railway went to the Boston, Concord, and Montreal Railroad, who had previously built a railway line to the base station from Fabians. Later, two new locomotives from a very similar railway in Maine that had closed recently arrived. These were Green Mountain Cog Railway No. 1, Mount Desert, and No. 2, which didn't have a name. These engines became the following. Number one became Cog Railway number four, Chikora, and then number two became number three, Agachuk. In 1889, the B, C, and M was absorbed into the Boston and Maine Railroad. The first big change the B and M made was in 1910, when all locomotives were converted from wood burning to coal burning. In 1929, for the Cog Railway's 60th birthday, Old Pepper Sass was restored to operation by the Boston and Maine Railroad and ran a commemorative trip, one that would end in disaster. That day, while approaching the summit, one of the cog gears, teeth on the engine, snapped, causing the engine to roll backwards uncontrollably down the mountain. The engineer and fireman jumped clear as Pepper Sass fell off of Jacob's ladder. Unfortunately, a photographer had been killed in the wreck. As her boiler hadn't ruptured, Pepper Sass was rebuilt and put on display. The next 30 to 40 years were relatively uneventful. Aside from the railway closing during World War I and II. But the worst was yet to come. In 
1967, the worst accident in the railway's history as of now happened. Number three, which was at that point named Base Station, was heading down towards the Skyline switch on the line. What they didn't know was the switch was misaligned, set against them. By the time the engineer had realized, it was already too late. Number three rolled over onto its top as the coach continued to roll a bit down the line before jumping the tracks and crashing into a nearby boulder. Eight people perished in the wreck and 70 were injured. As of today, it is the worst accident in the railway's history. In 1972, the railway's youngest locomotive, Colonel Teague, was built. This locomotive would be number 10. Its boiler had originally come onto site as a spare, but the railway had decided to build it into a locomotive. Skipping ahead a few years, most steam on the mountain had been retired at this point, and only a handful of steamers ran. 2005 was an interesting year for the Cog Railway. Locomotive number 9, Wombeck, was converted to burn biodiesel fuel. However, the locomotive was later changed back to coal. In 2008, the railway's biggest change was to be made. A new biodiesel-powered locomotive was built, originally for maintenance work on the line. However, it was decided to have it run in regular passenger service. This engine would come to be known as M1, and after nearly 150 years of steam ruling the railway, it was about to be dethroned. Over the years, Cog Railway built more and more biodiesels, which are very environmentally friendly over the steam locomotives, and are cheaper to run. As of 2024, they are running seven, with an eighth on the way. Thankfully, steam is not completely forgotten on the Cog Railway. Number 9, Wombeck, and number 2, Amanusik, still run daily in the summer, allowing guests to truly take a step back in time, back when climbing this mountain was thought to be nearly impossible. And the ones we have to thank for all of this are the great men and women who worked to keep this railway running. Even now, families still love the Cog Railway as much as they did over 100 years ago. And we couldn't have had it without Sylvester Marsh, the man who did the impossible. <laughs>